In today's conversation, we discuss personal magnetism, which one definition has it as interestingness that enables you to influence others. Now, if we look at the word interestingness, one definition has it as the power of holding one's attention. On the surface of this definition of interestingness, one may think of this as mental strain to hold another's attention. I would not suggest that. I suggest acknowledging you already have it. So let's explore what I mean by this further. On this channel, we discuss how everything is an automatic, authentic manifestation of beliefs and mental states, which are bodies of beliefs. By mentally embodying a desired state, you are fulfilled knowing you already have it. From this acknowledgement, everything happens automatically as the body moves automatically by law to actualize the realized fulfillment as your true self is already fulfilled. So if this state is conducive to personal magnetism, which happens to be your ideal state of consciousness, actualization of the attributes of the ideal state, which we can call interestingness or influence, appear automatically. The key distinction here is we're not seeking to influence another. To seek to influence another is not authentic, unconditional personal magnetism. Remember, everything happens automatically from the state of consciousness occupied. All roles are played and spirit animates all to reflect the state. Soul doership is an illusion as we discussed in Tuesday's video, which I'll link to in the description. And this is equally true in the art of personal magnetism. So the nuance point here is that even though one could desire to possess personal magnetism, it is remaining in the craving of desire for it, which has an opposite effect, which we could call personal repulsion. This is why we also say desire means you already have. Now, respectfully, contrary to the textbook definition of desire, which one has it as a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen, over here we say to desire is to already have. And knowing this truth, which is self-knowledge, know thyself, you acknowledge that you transcend any resistance-based belief towards unconditional acceptance which when it comes to personal magnetism, identification to beliefs resulting in seeking approval, validation, or confirmation in the external are the antithesis of personal magnetism. Unconditional personal magnetism is a natural result of a state of perpetual fulfillment, bliss, embodiment through the acknowledgement of knowing you are already whole, complete, and have all beyond those seeking beliefs formed as a result of judging by appearances. John 7, 24. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. And the good news is you inherently already have it all. The master of charisma as well said once, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And as you accept that you already have all you desire, it plays out automatically from that state of acceptance as personal magnetism and as harmonious relationships with others. So unconditional personal magnetism is not seeking to control others, nor is it a result of seeking to influence. Others show up automatically in mutual harmony, and they genuinely want to be there. That is unconditional personal magnetism. Thus acknowledge now, beyond appearances, you already have everything. Feel it as real now, like that's the way it is, and embody the state. Embody it now to actualize the realization of it. Now, as this is being said, one may look at the external, judging by appearances, undesirably, indicating to themselves that they are not allowing themselves to have all, which is not a true indication of unconditional personal magnetism. Imagination provides all true indication of personal magnetism. So cease seeking proof in the external. 
Release identification to that belief by filling your consciousness with ideal imaginal acts, imagining yourself already having what you desire. Anytime a desire shows up, acknowledge, I already have, just like that, and go on with your life. This also happens to be how you embody personal magnetism, by acknowledging you already have all. And by desire, I do not mean harm. I don't consider that a desire from the heart, rather an untrue belief about desire. There's no true desire to harm. So now, the inner is reality, as in you are reality itself. Imagination is where we realize reality, and the outer is where we experience the actualization of our realizations. This could be considered as a metanoia, a radical change of mind which happens to be a natural way of life for those who embody unconditional personal magnetism, from which personal magnetism is manifested automatically as harmonious relationships with others. See, one who is unconditionally magnetic is not swayed by appearances. They appear unmoved as they know they already have it all, regardless of appearances, by truly accepting that the inner is reality and the outer is an actualization of it. Now, on the flip side of unconditional personal magnetism is conditional identification with appearances, which is temporal and may result in suffering. Those who embody unconditional personal magnetism enjoy appearances unconditionally as true bliss is found within and experienced with appearances. Conditional identification to appearances is not conducive, thus, to unconditional personal magnetism. Unconditional personal magnetism is being not conditionally identified with appearances. Rather, acknowledging that you already are the embodiment of ideal attributes of personal magnetism, which are authentic self-confidence and bliss. Thus, it is a simple thing, truly unconditional acceptance. William Walker Atkinson in his book Art and Science of Personal Magnetism says, Mental states are not so much any set of particular thoughts, but rather are stated mental attitudes in relation to oneself and the outer world of them. One's mental attitude, if firmly defined and as firmly held, impresses itself upon everything around them. Their looks grow to conform. Their voice, their walk, their general appearance all grow to reflect their inner states of mind. Moreover, their mental atmosphere becomes so charged with certain vibrations that those who come in contact with them actually feel their mental attitude and adjust themselves to it. So here's the key for embodying authentic, unconditional personal magnetism. You exist beyond mental states. You, as in the I, transcend the state. You embody a state for life experience, yet you truly transcend it. Now this I, as we discussed in Sunday's video, is actually one with the I of all. And this I is already fulfilled, complete and whole in loving relationship with others, as in within the absolute truth, there is no other. True personal magnetism comes from acknowledging this I, contemplating this I, abiding as the I, which means releasing identification to all thoughts in the moment as a practice, to know through realization you are already one with all, and thus being not separate from others, the mind is purified from false beliefs of external seeking or any attributes that are the antithesis of unconditional personal magnetism. Now, by accepting who you truly are is already unconditional in reality, abiding in your true unconditional loving nature, personal magnetism is realized within and thus embodied automatically. Attributes through which one would consider you, like for example, confidence, bliss, love, presence, compassion, which are actually cohesive to the loving nature of this I, 
are experienced by those who experience you as a reflection of personal magnetism. This is why I always say, what we are appearing to do in this world of appearances is actualize self. Self-actualization is an authentic expression of the I, or we could say being how we truly desire to be, or simply being, which manifests as authentic personal magnetism. So abiding in the feeling of already being whole, complete, and fulfilled now is the secret. And as you remain embodying that feeling, you allow the experiences of personal magnetism to happen. It all appears to increasingly actualize automatically each moment, as he said. Their looks grow to conform, their voice, their walks, their general appearances all grow to reflect their inner states of mind. Moreover, their mental atmosphere becomes so charged with certain vibrations that those who come in contact with them actually feel their mental attitude and adjust themselves to it. Or we could say it appears that way. Thus, there is a compounding effect. Commit to the state and abide in it to actualize higher degrees of it. Like with any state, for example, prosperity. It continues to actualize in higher degrees as it is continued to be embodied. So again, key for personal magnetism, radical internal locus of control. Reality is inside and the outer aspect of life is an actualization of what has been realized inside. This is how we live life going forth. Otherwise, one appears to seek for approval, validation, or confirmation of personal magnetism, which is to imply not already having. Allow those beliefs of seeking externally to release, and you'll find it is easy to accept already having all that you desire, which results in experiences of personal magnetism. Which brings us to the next aspect, self-realization and self-actualization, which I'd like to discuss further next week through the seven stages of the spiritual alchemy process. Self-realization is acknowledgement of the I, as in you exist beyond mental states, and attributes of how you define a state. Now there's even beyond that I, which goes beyond the scope of our discussion today. For our intent and purpose here, you choose to fuse with your ideal state of consciousness, which upon acceptance of it through acknowledging you already have it, the self is actualized into form as the experiences of life that reflect accordingly. So actualizing self actually happens automatically and it is experienced as such as we allow it to happen, allowing the release of controlling beliefs, thus ceasing the unnecessary resistance. We allow them to release as they do not accurately represent the I. The I is loving, confident, and blissful authentically and unconditionally. So notice what we're doing here is acknowledging that we are already whole, all, and complete. It is an important distinction, so I'll repeat that again. Our true essence is all, complete, and whole. By meditating upon this, authentic personal magnetism is embodied. Again, this is the practice, meditating upon Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So authentically being these things, as it says, you do not seek these things externally as you are complete, all, and whole now. This results in authentic personal magnetism. People appear automatically in mutual harmony as you experience them. It feels like bliss and you flow and you don't seek approval. You acknowledge through your feeling that you are being personally magnetic, which also happens to be your natural way of being. So from my experience of practicing this recently, I went out with a friend. We went to a lounge and as soon as I walked in, I walked into this booth and started talking with the people there. After my friend came up to me and he said, how do you do that? You walked right in there and talked to them and they were fine with it. I said, everything happens automatically. And he said, 
What do you mean? I said, everything happens automatically by accepting self, acknowledging that it is the same self as all. As you accept self, you do things spontaneously. Your mind is not cluttered by beliefs of separation. I'm not afraid of talking to people. That would imply not having. And this was not always the way it was for me. Prior to not accepting self, I thought I was separate from people. Now they appear separate for the theater of life, yet they are truly not separate. So everything happens automatically upon acknowledgement that you are already whole, complete, and one with all, and they appear that way. It just so happens that I like talking to people in a lot of places, not all the time, as it happens automatically in an ideal ratio. I also like time with myself, as that's how I truly desire to be. If it was not how I truly desire to be, I wouldn't do it. There's no shame, judgment, or condemnation or force. I said, if this is how you truly desire to be, allow yourself to be that, and it won't be done from a place of needing anything. It is unconditional. Yet you'll have wonderful experiences. That's the nuanced point. It happens automatically as a result of accepting self. And so now you truly, I and him, are not any different. There's no such thing as comparing when abiding as the I. So thus, I know you can experience the same if you desire. And as we discuss, this is not about controlling, manipulating, or dominating another. Those beliefs don't exist when abiding as the I. Thus, they are not true. Accept your authentic self by capturing the feeling of already being that now. All complete, and whole. Realize it within and allow it to actualize automatically by remaining in that ideal state of consciousness. This is for ideal human experience, and by that I mean for our context today. Being authentic, as the attributes embodied correspond the ideal attributes of the I, which again is unconditional and one with all. Also, true confidence and bliss from which others appear automatically to enjoy reflecting that state. And enjoyed as life experiences that are authentic to the true self, which is unconditionally loving and one with all. Thus, we see clearly that if one allows themselves to be unconditionally loving in their ways, feeling one with all, everything and everyone would feel like that around them, which we could call unconditional personal magnetism. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I accept now that I'm already whole, complete, and all. From this inner knowing, all appears to reflect how I truly am. Everywhere I appear to be, others reflect the acknowledgement of the acceptance of self within. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.